Greetings, friends. It's your friendly neighborhood PhD, Dr. Judd Burton, coming to you with another Beyond Report on this Wednesday, June the 23rd, 2021. And as always, if you like the content, please click the like, subscribe, and share. Uh, we're trying to build those uh, uh, larger numbers uh, in the subscribing column, so uh, let's try and keep pumping those up. Uh, well, in terms of news today, uh, I wanted to report on an interesting article that I found on um, vampires. And it actually deals with the material evidence for vampires. Uh, it's a paper, uh, an academic paper written uh, by an archaeologist named um, uh, David Barroco. And he wrote a, a paper on um, using archaeological and historical evidence uh, to try and, and trace um, material evidence for uh, vampirism. And it's entitled um, Time to Slay Vampire Burials. And it, uh, as I say, it deals with the archaeological and historical evidence for vampires in Europe. Um, and you can download this from academia.edu. That's where I found it, uh, which always has a lot of, lot of great resources. Um, it appears what they're, they've tried to do with this paper uh, is to build a kind of matrix uh that outlines the connections, um, the recurrences, the kind of themes that you find in the archaeological record, um, you know, for remnants of, of vampire burials. Um, and some of those, of course, if any of you keep up with the literature, you know that that may include all kinds of apotropaics that have been uh, included with with the body in its interment, um, whether those are... are um, you know, garlic or garlic flowers or um, uh, nails or steaks uh, or uh, those kinds of things. Um, and this is all from taken from samples from different parts of Europe. And so you've got samples from Central Europe, from Southern Europe, from Eastern Europe, uh, the Slavic world, the Greco-Roman world, uh, the Germanic world. Um, and so this is interesting. It, it, it's I, I think it's it's a valuable move just in terms of cultural resource and and archaeology, um, but it's also useful to people who subscribe to a supernatural worldview. And uh, of course, the the author uh, it's pretty clear from the get go issues any sort of supernatural. Um, qualities to the vampire um, immediately almost immediately dismissing them you know as as fictitious or, or at least the the supernatural conception of them are uh, but nonetheless I think it is a valuable uh, article and I'll put a link to um, to that in the description now recently there was an, another uh, interesting archaeological find uh, that relates to the Bible. Um, there was a, a stela, uh, which of course is a, a, a large stone uh, with an inscription on it, um, usually a decree or some account or something like that. Um, but this stela referenced the name of the Pharaoh Hophra. And uh, gosh, like so many discoveries, uh, it's not the archaeologist that make the initial discovery, uh, it's usually, a, a, you know, like a farmer or, or somebody like that. And that's certainly the case here because the stela was found on a farm uh, in Egypt. And this guy was, was tilling his field and, and pulled part of this thing up. Uh, and that's, folks, I'm here to tell you, that's, that's how a lot of of discoveries are, are made and a lot of um, excavations ensue uh, after that sort of thing. Uh, but um, nonetheless, 
Hofra is is interesting for a number of reasons. Now he was a pharaoh of the twenty sixth dynasty uh during the New Kingdom and reigned from about five um eighty nine uh BC to about five seventy BC. So we're talking about a, a very late New Kingdom era pharaoh um uh, ruling at a, a, a time um contemporary with the, the Jewish uh Babylonian captivity. Um Egypt is on kind of shaky ground at this point. Um, it had suffered all kinds of depredations from outside um, forces really since since the 9th and 8th centuries BC, uh, notably their, their southern neighbors, the Nubians, who actually ruled over Egypt uh, as dynastic pharaohs. Um, so um, Hafra, is uh is referenced in the book of Jeremiah chapter 44 uh where Jeremiah prophesies against Hophra. Um Hophra is the the Hebrew uh rendering of the name and Wahebra is the the I believe that's how you pronounce it is the Egyptian rendering. So very interesting find linking that that person to the Bible but it's also further material evidence uh, of not only his existence but his his linkage to the narrative and history of the Bible. So very valuable, interesting find. I'll put a link in the description to that article as well. Well, speaking of the ancient Near East and the ancient world uh, in general, uh, I'll be starting a new lecture series on the uh, the ancient Near East and the prehistoric uh, Near East. Uh, hoping to finish up one of those today, and those will be available for uh, uh, purchase, um, and I'll keep you apprised of the uh, progress that I'm making. Um, but I hope that they'll be of benefit uh, to people. And um, I'm also developing two new certifications under the Institute of Biblical Anthropology, one in the ancient Near East and the Bible, and one in the Mediterranean world and the Bible. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. I don't know that I will have them ready for July. It's possible that I'll have them ready for that session. Um, but um, as I say, I'll, 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 I'll keep you posted on all the platforms and um, and make announcements through the Beyond Report and that 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 sort of thing, so that you will know. Uh, now that there are some sales this week that you can take advantage of in terms of the uh, uh, existing certifications, biblical anthropology, uh, where you get a lot of the ancient Near East stuff, and uh, biblical demonology and preternatural morphology, uh, aka Monsters 01. Uh, 101, excuse me. Uh, each of those uh, extending the Father's Day sale into this week is $125 each, and the uh, rudiments of, of uh, Greek, New Testament Greek, uh, continues to be on sale for $250. And uh, my books are on sale this week for uh, 10% off. I'll put links in the descriptions to all of that. Um, so lots of good teaching. Um, that you can avail yourself of, and I do appreciate uh, any of these purchases uh, because they help to fund what I do through the Institute of Biblical Anthropology, and, and I'm able to do the research that I do and bring many of the results of that uh, to you. So thank you to those of you who believe in my work and, and purchase the materials and books and teachings and courses. Uh, it, it all helps. Thank you very much, and thank you for your prayers and your support. Well, the um, probably the next video production is going to be a, 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 an episode of Sunday School X, uh, picking up in the Panea series that I started a number of months ago. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, I did a straw poll which is still in progress on Facebook about doing a, a Burton Beyond or Beyond podcast um, and getting some good responses for that. So I'm also taking that under consideration. That may be something 
uh, in the near future uh, that I'll undertake as well. Uh, but it just depends on what sort of response that I have. That's all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate all the support and prayers. Um, you guys are, are part of this. This is a um, it's a joint effort, and I appreciate it, and, and thank God every day for it. All right. Godspeed, my friends.